Mary Kay, I found it interesting that the Cleveland Indians did a salute to the Cleveland Browns and lost 17 to nothing. <laughs> it's been a very, very difficult week in Cleveland. <laughs> no question about it. It's been a really rough week. First, you know, you've got the, the Indians, you've got uh, obviously uh, the Cavs and what happened there. And then we had the death of Johnny Football yesterday. So it's just been a really disappointing week here. When you look at Johnny Manziel, he was, I mean, he's made these statements before where he, he accepts responsibility. He says he has to, you know, uh, act and behave in a certain way. But yesterday there seemed to be a genuineness, again, watching from afar, where he uses the word disastrous and, like you said, death to Johnny Football, the money sign. Is this the first, I guess, public sign that he has maybe turned the corner, that he understands the, the challenge of playing quarterback in the NFL? Well, you know, I can't honestly say uh, that I know that for sure at this point because I have heard these things before. The difference now is that uh, he's uh, coming off of rehab this time. Before, uh, it was a lot of just words and rhetoric and things like that. Now, uh, he can back it up with 10 weeks of inpatient rehab, uh, and he's trying to do things the right way. He's got his high school coach uh, living with him. He's got LeBron and Maverick Carter uh, kind of taking him under his wing. Uh, he's moved out of his downtown hot spot into a West Side Golf community but it's still one day at a time with Johnny Manziel and uh, and I, I do think it's going to be difficult for him to sort of stay out of the party life. Mary Kay if let's say all of that happens he matures he's got all these people the support staff entourage all the people that are trying to help Johnny Manziel forget idiot face and and Johnny football can he, in your opinion, watching him in spurted spots last year, really become an NFL? Get, that all of that works. Can he become a legitimate NFL starting quarterback? Well, you know what? He is definitely a work in progress, and I think the Browns really realize that. John DeFilippo is working with him. The Browns' new quarterbacks coach, Kevin O'Connell, uh, is working with him. And I think uh, that it's pretty clear that he's got a ways to go before he's ready to become an NFL starter. So even if he doesn't get on the field at all this year, you know, I don't think that they're looking at it as uh, necessarily a failed project. I mean, he can come back next year. They don't have a lot of money invested in him. He's, yeah. His whole entire contract was worth about $8 million. So even if he, if he comes back next year and is still learning uh you know i it's no loss to anyone so uh i'm not seeing it yet i'm seeing uh, little bits of progress here and there uh but i don't see a starter yet i think what hurt the browns more again me watching it from afar was not that manzel failed because he wasn't really expected to take over the league for those who you know watch it closely justin gilbert having a complete lost season the broncos liked him a lot he came in for a visit i mean he was considered by many you know the top cornerback on the board at least it's certainly in some circles has he shown i know he's had a, a better off season are they going to see something from him i mean is he going to be a guy now that can play and contribute i mean because for me when you look at the two of them gilbert was just a travesty given how poorly he played yeah, that was a shocker last year, especially because when I watched him in training camp, I mean, this guy is just a physical specimen. He was batting down passes. He was getting his hands on footballs. Uh, he seemed to be in the right place and doing the right things. Uh, at times, he looked to me last summer ahead of where Joe Hayden was wow. when he was a rookie in training camp. And I really uh, thought that, that Justin was going to be great last year. But he was derailed by the off-the-field things as well. And when we talked to him in this mini camp, he said, or was it last week, he said uh, that he had some similar issues to Johnny, not 100% the same, but some similar things. He would not elaborate. He wouldn't tell us what they were. We knew he had some kind of a, a personal issue or a personal problem. And, uh, you know, so, you know, I don't know. Maybe we'll know more down the road. But if he can put it together, uh, boy, he looks like he can be a player. Mary Kay Calvert is with us. Cabot, I'm sorry. Uh, and, and the reason why I stumbled there is because I always love seeing your house in the background. You got a green wall today. I, I, I don't know whether you were doing CGI when you were doing it before and it's not working today, but she's a beat writer for the Cleveland Browns from uh, the Cleveland Plain Dealer. And all our live guests are brought to you by Papa John's, official sponsor of the Colorado Rockies. The day after the Indians or the Rockies win, get 50% off your regular menu if either one of them ever 
never win again. Online, order at papajohns.com using the promo code ROCKSWIN. And Mary Kay, let's take five things. Give me five things that have to happen for the Cleveland Browns to be a good team next year and contending for a playoff spot. Well, first of all, Josh McCown, he's got to come through for them. He went 1-10 last year in Tampa Bay. The year before that in Chicago, he threw 13 touchdown passes against only one interception. So which guy are they going to get? The Josh McCown of last year or the one from the previous year? So that's probably number one. Number two, uh, they have got to stop the run. Last year they were 32nd against the run. Uh, they've done a lot of things to shore that up. And, uh, and I think uh, it should be much better. You know, they got Danny Shelton, their, their number one pick. Uh, and, you know, they brought in a bunch of other guys in to help in that regard. I think they have to continue to get the interceptions that they got last year. They had 21 interceptions. Their secondary is really tremendous. So if they can get those, that was a major reason why they were able to win seven games last year. And one of the reasons why Brian Hoyer was, uh, you know, enabled – to look good for a while uh, is because they got all those picks. So they have to continue to do that. And then the, somebody's got to step up in the passing game. Somebody has to prove uh, to, to be good. They don't have a Josh Gordon. They don't have an elite receiver. Yeah. So, you know, Dwayne Bow, one of those guys uh, has got to step up. And then, uh, and then the other thing is, you know, I think they do need uh, one of these young running backs to get the hot hand and, uh, and come through for them, especially late in the season. Do you think, final question, do you think some of those things can happen? <laughs> can you know all what? of them happen? You know what? I think I definitely think they'll still get the picks. I think the defense is going to be good. I think the running game, the run defense will be much better. The things uh, that we're not too sure about uh, are, are the passing game and scoring some points. They only had 12 yeah. touchdown passes last year. That was a league low. Uh, so Josh McCown has got to come in here and be able to put some points on the board, and that's the big question mark. It's always a pleasure. You're always informative, and uh, we enjoy talking with you, and we hope you'll continue to join us every once in a while, Mary Kay. Thank you. Uh, and and that people follow you at Twitter and all the stuff that they should follow you other than the plain dealer. Where, how can they uh, – what's your handle? Uh, Twitter is at Mary Kay Cabot. Great. Thanks again for your time. Thank you. Thanks, Mary. She does great work. Oh, great she does, writer. yeah.